All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar. Uh, today's webinar is Get Your Ads in Gear, um, uh, Influencer Marketing for Recessionary Times. I'm Rodney Mason, your host. I'm head of marketing for brand partnerships. And uh, really quickly, our agenda for today, I'm just doing a quick check. Can everybody hear me okay? I see that they can. Okay, great. All right, so um, we'll give you a very brief intro on LTK. Uh, the largest influencer platform in the world. Um, then we're going to get into some really interesting research that we've done recently um, and also some secondary research uh, that are going to help define what a recession is, where we are in recessionary times, and uh, jump into some secondary research that shows proven recession marketing strategies that really work. Um, one of the studies was done over the past 20 years, and it was recently, recently released. Um, so, and it's not just about influencer, it's about marketing in general. So some great stuff there. Uh, then we're going to get into a little bit more about creator and how it's relevant to all these findings. And we'll wrap it up in a bow for you. Um, we've got a lot of folks here. Um, more will be coming in, but uh, the great news is following this webinar, we'll send out the recorded version of this to you. And you'll also get the presentation in its entirety. We're citing all of our research, both ours and the secondary research with links to the studies. So it'll be very helpful for you. All right, and with that, I'm just checking the chat really quickly. Looks like we are all good. Okay. Okay, oops, I skipped ahead. Okay, so um, really quick, two pages on LTK. Who is LTK and what do we do? We bring brands together with creators to empower shoppers to buy the items that they see on creators' posts. And the way that we work uh, is different from any other platform in the world. So creators are out in the social sphere, they're on their blogs, and they have uh, their own posts on LTK. Um, but they attract their followers and make posts and link back to their stores that are hosted on LTK. And LTK partners with brands and retailers um, to connect them to those sites and in doing so, creates uh, trackable sales uh, for uh, creators to be compensated for the sales that they've sold and to help brands grow their business. Uh, the ultimate objective for brands is ROAS, and the ultimate objective for creators is to connect with their consumers and be compensated. Uh, when you look at LTK, uh, we are the number one tech-enabled power partner for creator-guided shopping. Last year, LTK's 20 million monthly shoppers drove over $3.6 billion in trackable sales. Now, that sounds like a big number, but um, that's just what's trackable. Uh, typically, when someone comes in to buy a product uh, and they end up on a brand's website, they buy other things. Um, and we'll talk about that more later. Uh, we're also driving a lot of traffic, not just online, but in-store. Um, LTK has a five-star rated shopping app. Uh, we've got 6,000 brands on our platform, and we have hundreds of thousands of curated creators that run their businesses on the LTK platform. With that, um, I'm going to just touch briefly on our methodology. Uh, we're going to dive into a lot of numbers here, but again, you'll receive all this information, so don't be overwhelmed by it. Um, but today, our webinar will include key findings related to national studies that LTK has conducted in the last six months, some of them as recently as March. And um, the methodology for those studies, uh, we always speak to at least 1,000 consumers online. Our March uh, 1st, 2023 study, we actually talked to uh, 1,600. Um, and then a second study in March where we talked to 1,100 um, consumers. Uh, but anyway, when we do that, um, we use a tool to make sure that it's balanced to reflect the United States by age, income, and geography and uh, gender. And that's with 97% confidence. So uh, we're very confident in the numbers uh, that we have from our studies. We've got a lot of great secondary research today. Again, we'll provide those links. Um, the first study we're gonna talk about uh, or um, provide some insights from is Analytics Partners. They did a 20 year recession marketing investment study. Um, we'll also have some recessionary statistics and insights from the National Bureau of Economic Research and the World Economic Forum. And finally, Nielsen, um, who has some great insights. So with that, we're going to jump in and we're going to start with the fun stuff. So what is a recession? You hear about it every day. You watch CNBC, you watch the news, and you hear different definitions of recession. But what you have not heard yet from anyone in the United States is that we are in a recession. Um, 
So unofficially, the widely accepted definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of receding gross domestic product or growth uh, in the macro economy. Uh, that means GDP is down overall. Uh, the, the association that's really responsible for identifying a recession is the National Bureau of Economic Research. It's the official identifier of recessions in the US, but it does not look at GDP. That's because GDP is only reported quarterly. There's a delay in that. Um, and those reports are often um, recalibrated after they've been published. So not as reliable uh, for the National Bureau of Economic Research. They're actually looking at monthly numbers. So their definition of a recession is that a recession involves a significant decline in activity across the uh, economy broadly, not just in certain sectors, but across the majority of the, um, the uh, economy. And um, they're typically saying that um, the, the typical recession has falling payroll, industrial output, and rising unemployment. So where are we right now? Where is the US economy? Um, I'm not here to uh, do any forecast or anything, but I'm just gonna tell you what the news is saying and, and what we're reading in the trades. Number one, there's tightening of credit which is caused by higher Fed interest rates to bring down inflation and decrease in corporate real estate demand. Um, that the uh, decrease in corporate real estate demand is stressing bank loans and available capital to drive business. So banks are tightening up and that's impacting businesses. We've seen it in direct to consumer, you're seeing it in some other areas um, and that does slow down the economy. Part of that is driven by the Fed because of inflation. So they're purposely doing that. But also post COVID, there's fewer people in office buildings and a lot of banks hold a lot of commercial real estate loans. And uh, so there's stress on those and that slows down the money supply. Additionally, there's geopolitical tensions impacting raw materials and manufacturing. There are rolling recessions going on, meaning there are certain sectors, if you see here on the chart, that are, have been trending negative uh, this year. Um, they are improving, but it's not the entire economy, it's part of the economy. And in particular, financials are the most stressed, but you're also seeing it in basic materials and consumer goods, a little bit in healthcare and uh, in consumer services. But all are trending better. Um, inflation has improved. It's at 4.9% last year, it was about 9.5%, but that's still above the 2% target. And then unemployment right now is at 3.4%, which is pretty healthy, which is why consumers are still positive. Uh, but this is the territory that we're in. When you look at the leading economic indicators of a recession, um, the Conference Board uh, is a nonprofit 100-year-old organization that has an index called the Leading Economic Indicators Index. And if you follow this, it's a six-month LEI measure uh, that measures duration, depth, and diffusion of a downward of downward economy movement. So if you follow this closely, um, as of March, it says that we're in a recession. It says clearly across the board. Um, and I'm not speaking for them, but if you look on this chart right here, whenever you see the red, it has accurately identified recessions uh, time and time again. Um, so in, in uh, their index, uh, it looks like we are currently tracking in a recession. Um, there is one other thing, uh, consumer sentiment. So where are consumers? So we ran a study in March and we asked consumers very specifically, do you think the US economy is in a recession? And unanimously across the board, the uh, usually Gen Z millennials and the general population are not perfectly aligned. They are perfectly aligned. 72% of consumers believe that we are currently in a recession. Um, the demographics least impacted by a recession uh, that we found in our study, Gen Z, uh, in part as it relates to inflation, their income uh, advances more with inflation than any other generation. Um, millennials are also impacted less, uh, household incomes over $100,000, and then people who shop creators, and we'll show you what that means, but people that uh, shop creators heavily uh, are much, uh, they're spending more, spending less like uh, we're in a recession. So the silver lining to all of this, all this doom and gloom, recession is not all doom and gloom. It's a reality. The market has to adjust. But if you go back over the history of recessions, um, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, the average recession is 10 months. So it's not that long, typically. 
Um, and we haven't had a lot of protracted uh, recessions in modern times since World War II. The great news is the recovery time is uh, on average 57 months. Now we just went through the longest recovery time um, ever uh, from 2008 until COVID hit and we went through a mild recession. Um, but again, recovery time is 5X longer than a recession. So there's a lot of uh, sunshine on the other side of the clouds. So the reason we're here today is to really talk about marketing and what, is, what are proven strategies that can help you, everybody that's come to this webinar, market better in a recession. So rather than just you know, us stand up here and give you some tips and shoot from the hip, we're gonna be um, sharing some insights um, from other organizations and our research to help you uh, make some smart decisions during recessionary times. Um, so a just completely proven strategy, which we're gonna walk through here, um, for the majority of brands during a recession is sustaining marketing investment in a recession. It actually grows share uh, both during and post-recession. And I'm not talking about influencer, I'm talking about marketing in general. So um, just to get into this a little bit more, um, this study, which you'll have a link to, uh, was released by Analytic Partners. It's the ROI Genome Intelligence Report, the Rules of Recession Proofing. And it looks over the last 20 years at um, hundreds of brands, um, medium and large size, that have continued their investment, some have cut back, and it shows the ramifications of both um, in, their, in their marketing. Oops, so here I jumped ahead too far. Okay, so some of the findings that they found, 60% of brands that increased marketing investment during the last recession saw ROI improvements. So these are brands that said, hey, a recession is coming up, uh, we know we're in one, or we believe we're in one, and we're going to continue to invest year over year like we have in the past. So we're actually increasing our investment. It doesn't mean that they went out and took a lot more money and dumped it in, but they said, we're going to continue our trail that we normally go on. We're going to blaze that trail. 60% of those brands that just did that grew uh, during a recession. 17% growth and in incremental sales for brands that increased media investment during the last recession. So all those brands that did invest in uh, media realized, uh, or increasing their media realized a 17% growth in the last recession, which wasn't that long ago. Um, and then uh, over 50% of brands that increased marketing investment during the last recession saw ROI growth in back-to-back -back years. And if you think about it, you know, we talk about a recession being 10 months long, recovery about 57 months. Nobody knows when it starts and stops. Just the nature of that alone, if you continue the stream and you don't cut back on marketing, but you continue it, well, everybody else is cutting back. You're going to be ahead of them during the recession and they're going to be playing catch up because they're not going to know when the recession is over until it's announced, which is always way after the fact. So you're just going to end up ahead. And stealing market share, and then that's, as everybody knows, much more expensive to gain back. So a sound recession marketing strategy isn't to slash budget, but to optimize media mix and invest in channels that are that perform better. Um, there's a report here from Nielsen that recommends this. Um, other folks recommend it, but we put them in here because they're a very credible source that uh, tracks ad spending and um, and performance. All right, so um, in our study in March, we had some very interesting insights. Uh, we have found that creators are the most trusted social media for all generations. So when you think about Gen Z, millennials, the general populations, creators are trusted more than social media ads and celebrity posts. In fact, if you look at like Gen Z, creators are three and a half times more influential uh, than ads, social media ads. And um, the reason that we share this is because as you're looking to optimize and spend your dollars in the right place, you have to look at the right media to deliver. Um, what's interesting about creators is that uh, they are driving shopping. So they're not just about image and awareness, and then people show up in the store and buy. It's certainly that works. But uh, the percent of consumers that make purchases online recommended by creators, clicking their links and going and buying those products, you've got 78% of Gen Z now doing that, millennials at 68%, 
and 62% of the general population. Those numbers have uh, grown substantially just in the last couple of years, but almost two thirds of the general population are now uh, shopping creators. And Gen Z is 26% greater than the general population. So if you're targeting Gen Z and millennials, uh, which there's a lot of reason uh, to, uh, creators make a lot more sense. Um, shoppers also trust creators' opinions. The top reasons the general population shops from creators, number one, is for discovery of new products and brands. So if you're rolling out new brands, new products, um, they trust creators more than ads. They trust them more than PR or anything else. Uh, because they're truly trying the product, they won't endorse it unless they believe in it, and their social followings believe in them. Um, they follow them. They follow their lifestyles. Also, uh, the other reason is that creators provide authentic opinions for product quality, style, and how the product fits. They actually usually demonstrate that. A lot of people will follow creators. Some of the creators they follow have the same body type as they do, so they can actually see the product demonstrated for them or uh, used um, in the way that they would use it. But um, creators are efficient beyond a click. Um, they're actually driving shoppers in store. Now we do tracking sales. We mentioned that we track 3.6 billion, uh, but uh, there's a whole segment of consumers that see creators just like they do digital ads or TV ads or anything else that are going in store. And from what we're seeing here and tests we've run, these numbers are, uh, really accurate. You'll see that they're very close to the same number of people that buy from creators online. 63% of the general population say that they go and store and buy creators' recommendations. Now, if you think about that, how does that happen? You know, if, if a creator is online and you're standing in a store making a purchase, how does that happen? Well, it's really easy. They have their phone in their hand. So they use that as their reference tool. They learned that through COVID in particular when, when there was a huge acceleration in creator shopping. But as they're standing in the store, they can reference uh, creators very easily. Um, and then you see millennial and Gen Z are even much higher. Um, some top product categories purchased in store from creators recommendations. Number one, consumer packaged goods, um, which is a little bit surprising for some folks perhaps. Um, that's because if you go back to the history of creator, it really started kind of in the beauty space, started in the fashion space. But um, as we're going to show you here, consumers are following creators across their lifestyle. So CPG is number one, gaming and electronics is number two, fashion number three, home is number four. And 42% of Gen Z have shopped at a new retail store because of creator recommendations. So not only are people shopping in stores more, they're shopping new products, they're shopping the products that the creators recommend. But when a creator recommends a store, um, Gen Z in particular, 42% of them will shop at new retail stores recommended to them. So um, really what's happened with the creators, again, it was about following people that are like me so that I can see what they like. Uh, but they've really built their followings um, and on a, on a very large scale where now consumers are just looking for inspiration across a range of product categories. They're shopping the lifestyle of the creators and um, not only for essentials, but also splurge worthy purchases. Uh, this is a little bit of an eye chart, but you're going to get this document uh, sent to you, both video and uh, the presentation. But this is an example here. Um, the top 10 categories being shopped across creators by generation, and they vary um, by generation. And there are some very large segments uh, that have uh, that consumers shop from creators that aren't even on the top 10 list because we've we've broken this up into um, so many different segments. For instance, home, you don't see a lot of home on here. Home's number 11, and it's huge. Um, but in the top 10, beauty and personal care is right up there at the top. Clothes, shoes, and accessories, number two. Electronics, number three. Then you start seeing you know, different things pop up. You see cleaning supplies for the general population, which is still high for millennials and Gen Z. All natural and organics. You see gifts and baby and movie and music and um, health and wellness just across all kinds of categories, um, which for you as a marketer, you can be thinking about creators, not just for beauty and fashion, but selling across the spectrum of what you're doing, especially in the consumer packaged goods space and some of these other spaces.
Um, so you'll see a lot in the press. Occasionally you'll hear uh, rumblings that, oh, creators over or people don't trust them. So we asked in March, we said, hey, um, what do you think about creator marketing? Not just creators, but creator marketing. And um, in here we have it gener generationally broken out, but there are favorable opinions about uh, creator content. 82% of Gen Z feel very favorable about it. Millennial, 78%. General population, 79%. So very positive um, sentiments about creator content in general. We mentioned it's trusted more than ads, but actually as content, uh, for a lot of people, it's entertainment. It's actually something that they look forward to. Um, when you talk about actual commissionable links, you know the creator is going to get paid if you click on this link that they're recommending. How do you feel about that? Three quarters of Gen Z are more than comfortable with it, and two thirds of millennials and almost two thirds of general population are very comfortable that that creator is getting commissions on the sales that they're um, driving. And then favorable opinions about creator gifting. So creators have received gifts. Um, you got 65% of Gen Z, 63% of millennials, and 64% of the general population. So just in general, um, the population of the United States by generation, um, by a wide margin, the majority are very accepting of creators. Something really interesting, this is a study that we ran in June of 2022 when inflation was raging. Um, so we ask a lot of questions, but something that we found is that Gen Z and millennials were least impacted by inflation. Now, I did talk about that a little bit earlier, but Gen Z's um, income in particular uh, moves more quickly at the rate of inflation. Um, and then uh, millennials are uh, in the types of jobs and fields where they've been impacted least. What's interesting is those are the two generations, even though the general population is catching up, that engage most with creators. Um, inflation's impact on the buying power from the past six months, the most impacted households with, uh, were those with less than 50,000 income. Um, a lower impact, so the people that had the lowest impact were millennials and households with more than 100,000 income. And actually, at the time when we ran this study, Gen Z's buying power had actually improved uh, because they were getting raises and um, uh, things weren't hadn't caught up to them yet. Um, despite believing we were in a recession, creator shoppers, which is a large segment of the country, continue to spend. Uh, creator shoppers were 3x as likely to say that both their buying power and intent to purchase has increased year over year. And again, you know, that does skew Gen Z and millennial. And, um, from an income perspective, uh, it's going to skew a little bit higher. So that makes sense. But also the fact that they engage with creators, um, they're much less likely to be um, cutting back as much as the general population. Um, Looking in on the LTK platform, so we have 20 million monthly shoppers, and uh, what we've seen, what we've seen in Q1, is that shoppers and creators continue to lean in more um, to shop on LTK. So um, as it relates to new creator count, creators coming in and signing up on LTK, we're, we're seeing that every day uh, continue to grow. In Q1, we saw more clicks. Um, clicks actually grew double digits year over year. And then on GMV, um, we've grown double digits year over year. So we're still on our platform, just from all the sales and everything that we can see, we're still seeing um, significant velocity in a positive direction. Um, a study that we did in 2021 was focused on influential shoppers. So these are sort of the minor leagues of creators. These are the, uh, uh, the followers of uh, creators that are highly likely to share uh, creators' posts. Um, and what we found <clears throat> in studying that, the population and looking at those customers, um, is that there's a 2x halo from any reach that a creator has. Um, for the most part, creator attributed sales are amplified by at least 2x. So if you're on a program with LTK or another platform and you're working with creators and you're paying commissions on sales, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed that your sales are at least 2x those that you're paying commissions on. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One is all the reposts that you get from the influential shoppers. But there's also um, what happens is those people go in store and buy, which most of those sales are not trackable. Um, and then uh, lastly, from the reposts that are done, people are driving in store 
um, but not necessarily clicking on the links. So um, we see that very conservatively at uh, 2x from a tracking perspective. Okay, um, some other interesting things. Again, framing all this up uh, for everybody in case you join late, um, but it currently looks like we're teetering on recession. Uh, there are indicators, consumers, and um, other uh, indexes that say we are in a recession, but the silver lining is that recessions don't last long. There's a lot of upside. Uh, from an investment perspective, it makes sense um, and has been proven in a 20-year study that um, you want to continue your investment in marketing and you want to recalibrate that marketing. So you want to move it around and not just be spending exactly where you are. You want to optimize. And the bright, shiny object um, that's performing extraordinarily well uh, in these times, um, one of them is uh, creators. Um, so here's a couple of other ways that creator shopping um, can positively impact your marketing investment that you may not be thinking about. Creator guided shopping as a means of search. So when you think about search, particularly spending on Google, uh, retail media networks and other places, um, consumers are using creators to search for new products and recommendations. Um, what they told us in a national study uh, that search engines are still number one, um, but Gen Z and millennials rank TikTok and Instagram higher than brand websites for performing searches to receive product information or recommendations. So think about this. Consumers would rather search on social media than on a retailer's website for product information and recommendations. All the content that they're searching, almost all of it is creators. Yeah, there's friends and family, but the majority of that's creators. So when you're buying a creator campaign to drive sales, you're not only impacting their followers, but there are also people that are searching on these uh, social platforms. And um, even if they're not following the creators, that content can pop up. And there's a form of search that you're impacting that you may not have thought about. Another interesting stat that we found in this study uh, from March of this year, 18% of Gen Z and millennials rank the LTK app or creator content higher than search engines for performing searches to receive product information or recommendations. So again, um, a nice byproduct that you aren't paying any incremental dollars for, but when you um, do sponsorships with creators, you're actually impacting search. All right. Um, and this is a back from the 20-year study from uh, analytics partners that was just released, but it was a 20-year study of um, recessionary spend. Um, the recommendation uh, in that study that you have a link to uh, talks about playing the long game. So strictly lower funnel tactics, such as paid search that traditionally drive high ROAS, um, are short-term activations that underperform their long-term counterparts over time. There's really an interesting, if you Google this, um, you'll find that some folks have started using AI and they said, hey, what should I do in a recession? How should I market? And um, some folks have gotten returns that said, um, stop your branding and just focus on search for ROI for a very short term, then go back to branding because branding outperforms the short-term search. Um, other other AI has come back and said, just keep the long term branding. Don't give don't give any of that up, and to give up the search. So you're kind of getting mixes, uh, you know, mixed uh, reads from AI. But across the board, in this 20 year study, that's very factual. It studied real brands. Uh, it's saying to invest more in driving branding. The beautiful thing about Creator is uh, it helps with search, it helps with immediate sales, but it also elevates that brand image. Uh, which is really important um, in, during a recession. Okay, um, just to make you aware, probably already are aware, but statistically aware of uh, justification, um, short form video has exploded. And you know, certainly TikTok came on the scene and it, you heard a lot about TikTok. Um, it's kind of gone up and down in different directions, um, still very, very, very popular, but has changed the industry. And um, what's happened is short form video has become um, just a massive tool uh, for creators. And you know, what, what is short form video? It's snackable viewing to give users bite-sized info that they can quickly digest. Um, what consumers from LTK's national study said in March, 57% of consumers watch video on social media created by influencers. So they're still looking at the flat content, but um, 
they are looking at, uh, definitely looking at the video. And then 66%, two thirds actually prefer watching videos over viewing still images. And why do consumers like creator video posts? Um, that's because they demonstrate the product in use, number one, and that short form video does it more quickly for them because they're in, uh, in a hurry and on their phones. Uh, it's more realistic and it highlights the product from multiple angles. So it gives them a very realistic perspective. So as you're thinking about investing in creator during recessionary times, make sure that you're thinking about video. Um, the surge in short form, uh, short form video, um, just on LTK, our data, again, with the 20 million shoppers, um, we've seen video content growth year over year of 3x GMV on our platform. Uh, in this past year. And then um, short form video just in general, as far as content is up 6X. And you know why is this valuable? It elevates your product and performance. Um, it's a macro industry shift that you need to account for and you need to optimize it for your budget in recessionary times. Um, this is not from, um, this next chart is not from LTK, but it's from the Interactive Advertising Bureau. Um, and they just released their report last week at the upfronts in New York. And lo and behold, uh, ad buyers, ad investors are spending or plan to spend more on creator-driven video and content than they do on Hollywood-produced content online. Um, so that's a huge number. And then you can see here the trend, um, they're all going towards short-form video. So um, show this only to show that there is a consensus with planners and buyers in the industry that um, this is where the market is going. Okay, so um, some other ways to optimize. So in a recession, you're thinking about moving dollars to creator. Um, we would be remiss if we didn't mention media boosting, which is advertising, um, but it's using the creators. So, um, and this, this can drive three to 10X scaled reach. So what is media boosting? Media boosting scales creator collaborations through the amplification of the campaign um, by taking the creator's actual content as it actually exists, not changing it, not reformatting it, just taking it like it is. And then on the platform that it appears, buying media and boosting that. Um, we've seen uh, just amazing results, three to 10X scale. And what, what you can do with that, so imagine you have a creator universe maybe you're reaching an audience of one and a half million people. You can scale that sometimes three to 10 X. You can also use it to target. So you can geo target, you can pick geography, um, zip codes, you can pick you know, age, income, other things uh, that you might want um, to amplify that post. There is white listing where you can take creator content and you can go create your own ads. And we've seen in side-by-side -side tests that if um, you boost versus white listing, which white listing does work, um, better than typical ads, it outperforms. Then we've had clients do side by side, just a regular ad and a whitelisted ad, and the whitelisted ad will outperform. But media boosting infinitely outperforms both. Um, so want to make you aware of uh, media boosting as you're planning your uh, creator content. Another huge area for creators uh, and creator commerce is retail media networks. Um, so we work with some of the largest retailers in the world. Uh, they all have retail media networks and no surprise, um, social media is one of the top spends on their platforms other than search. Search is really important, uh, but because of social media um, and because we have curated creators, we are able to uh, quickly scale influencer programs for them. And uh, we've seen uh, early and tremendous success across retail media networks. If you're not familiar with the growth in retail media networks, there's a lot of value in it, not just not just by doing the creator um, the creator buys on the network, but just working closely with the retail media network. Um, one, you can scale um, if, if you're a retailer in your retail media media network, you can scale your presence by all your partners steering back into you. So there's that opportunity, both from a creator and other perspective. But as a brand, um, you get access to more data than you had before, um, which allows the retailer to monetize that data. That's good for them. But as a brand, you get more access to data. Um, you get to grow relationships with those key retailers. Uh, you can be more flexible. So uh, there's a change in the market, something's going on. You're able to hit that market quickly. Creator works really well with that flexibility, helps you get those messages up there faster, but just addressing the market with the retailer, uh, a lot of times uh, you can do that more quickly with them 
uh, because they're adapting themselves. Um, and then there's just great measurement and uh, staying uh, competitive on the platform. Um, we've we've got some information on retail media networks. Uh, we've got a few articles and things on our site that you can access if you'd like more information on that, both from a retail media network perspective and how uh, influencer creators impact that. So really quickly, I'll summarize here. We'll um, open this up to some questions. I see there's some chat going on here, um, but uh, let me, oops, let me close this, sorry. Okay, trying to close the chat, okay. Um, so from a summary, consumer sentiment and leading economic indicators indicate the US is in a recession. We're not declaring that here today as LTK, that's up to the federal government to do. And it most likely could be three to six months from now before that ever happens. Um, but uh, from all indications, it looks like we are. The average recession is only 10 months. Uh, the average recovery time is 57 months. Proven recessionary strategy, maintain or increase marketing spend, spend recalibrating investments to grow during and post-recession. And that's not just pontification or guessing. That's from a 20-year study uh, that we have a link to in here that was just released over the last 20 years that shows the majority of brands uh, that follow that path that actually grow during a recession and post-recession. Um, creators are trusted more than ads and they're performing better. Um, and that's all trackable. And you can see that. We've got the studies here to show it, but you can see it if you're running campaigns uh, every day. Gen Z and millennials are least impacted by inflation and they do shop creators most. So when you're shopping, when you're working with creators, Certainly, you can drive the general population, but Gen Z and millennials, um, those least impacted, you can push even further. Um, shoppers buy from creators online and in store. And when you're working with creators, almost all their commissions and everything's based off of online, but you're getting significant pull through in store. Um, so that's another huge value for you from the ads. And you're not just driving sales. It's great. You get ROAS from creators, but they also elevate image and consideration. We do a lot of studies for major brands on um, consideration, intent, um, brand image, and you can see the lift uh, that creators drive. And then media boosting and retail media networks are a great way to scale creator reach. Media boosting can take that existing campaign and sometimes grow it three, pretty easily three to 10x and uh, provide even more targeting. Uh, retail media networks are great for if you're a retailer um, using creator, you can bring in your partners and quickly scale, massively scale a creator campaign for yourself. And if you're a brand, you get the draft off of that. So jumping in on that retail media network, um, the association with the uh, retailer can grow that more quickly. Um, we'll go to Let's see. Next slide. All right. So um, we have a couple more slides. If you can hang with us here, um, just want to let you know that we do have a back to school webinar coming up. Um, we're super excited about it. Uh, we've just finished it. We're tabulating it. Uh, we're looking at intent for back to school, the categories that are going to be driven, when people are going to shop and how they're going to shop. And there's some prizes. There are surprises in there. Um, a uh, I, I, I won't even give anything away, but there's definitely some surprises. The link is right here. Uh, also, when you get this deck, you can uh, go to that. So you might take a screenshot of this and uh, you can go sign up right now if you want to. Um, so we invite you to that. It's June 14th, um, just a few weeks away. And it's kind of crazy to think about back to school since school's just getting out, but people are shopping earlier. Other additional partnership opportunities that cost you zero dollars um, to partner with LTK. Uh, we have our brand central uh, location um, on our website. So if you go to this URL, company.shopltk.com backslash brand central, you'll see all of our studies, all the secondary studies that we talk about in here, and a lot of other information that we have both from our platform um, and the industry. Um, and you're free to uh, peruse that all you want. You'll find all of our webinars and studies. Um, Another tool that we have, uh, I did mention that we've done brand studies, intent studies, and um, consideration studies with our clients, but we have um, LTK Insights, and it's a team of uh, analysts that look both on our platform um, and then also across sales, and we can look at categories and provide benchmarking. So we don't give away any proprietary information, but we can show brands, hey, in general, in your segment with the people you're competing with, this is where you're falling out from awareness and engagement um, uh, with creators and in general. And then let's see, oops, 
thought we had one more slide. Oh, yes. Um, LTK ads. So on our platform, I mentioned we have 20 million shoppers. We have hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of curated creators. We're actually a media ourselves. We have partners every day uh, that buy media from us to get their messages out uh, to creators. So if you're interested in LTK ads, you can always reach out to uh, some of our folks here. Um, we tend to uh, reserve these for our customers. We don't just let anybody come in off the street and buy the ads. But if you're an LTK customer, um, we give you the platform to uh, share the ads. Okay, and with that, uh, just a reminder, back to school webinar is coming up.